Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's once again time for the podcast episode number 145. I am one of your hosts, Josh, joined as always by the guy that, insert rude comment here, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah. Love you too. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, it's good. Yeah, shut up. Introduce the guest. <laughs> Good to be back. Uh, we have a return guest uh, tonight. We have uh, Mr. Matt McCarthy, actor and comedian and writer. Uh, Matt, it's good to have you back here, buddy. It's been about like I think like a year or about like two years, I think, since we had you on the show. It's been a while. Um, well, hello there. Oh, it's good to have you back. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having me back. Yeah, no, thanks for coming back, man. We appreciate you. Like, uh, just as someone that, like I said before, when we first had you is a huge fan of your comedy like it's you know really good to have you back on here and thrilled to have you so uh yes sorry about last yeah. time uh my son was homesick from school and then my wife came home from work with what he had and then all of a sudden <laughs> i looked at my phone and i was like oh my god it's like 7 45 and i completely forgot about the show so that's how right, uh, luckily <clears throat> my son is constipated but my wife is home and it's all bacon. You know, at least it's not the uh, other way around where your son's constipated and your wife has diarrhea. That would have just been like really, you know, an explosive situation. And then, and then I died to the trap that Goldilocks would have picked. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Poop humor is awesome. No, but <laughs> it's good to have you back, man. I'm happy that they're okay. Uh, it sucks that the kid is constipated, but at least um, you know your partner in crime has uh, that responsibility tonight. So, well, it's just you know, a matter of time to hang out with like, us. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to get him with some fiber-rich foods, and because um, he's lit, he's seven, so it's like he gets. Con we don't know that he's constipated until like he like feels nauseous, like he's like so backed up, like he gets sick, and then it's like, oh mm -hmm. no, this has happened before. It hasn't happened in a long time, but yeah. Because well, he started he school, wants, I... and so he's eating the school lunch and not eating, like, the lunch that we gave him. So he comes home, and he's like, what would you have for lunch? He's like, ah, a hot dog. And we're like, what? Okay, did you eat the carrots we packed? Ooh, I dropped those on the ground. That's his, that's his go-to. <laughs> and we're like, no more. No more of this dropping stuff on the ground, homie. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. Well, if... Hey, listen, if you want, buddy, I'm working. I'm still working healthcare. I'll be working healthcare for at least the next two weeks before I'm uh, taking like a three month sabbatical and just focusing on mine and Josh's company. But in the meantime, if you want, I've got you. We both live in LA. I can always meet you at like a mutual point. Like, and I can actually give you milk and magnesia to give to your kid. That'll clear Thank him right you. the hell out. We that way, it'll be like a it'll be like a healthcare drug deal. The doctor prescribed uh, <laughs> Miralax. Okay. All right. And so we're doing that so far, but I'll, I'm going to keep you on retainer. Sounds good, buddy. So what's been going on with uh, you and the, um, I don't know, like last time we talked about was that like 2021, Josh, around there, I think. Um, and it was the week before uh, How We Roll premiered. Um, was, that last, was that last year? That was last year. Okay. Oh, God, time just like flies by. And I mean, we're already at like episode 140 something. And I just said, Josh keeps track and I don't. That's why I love him. Um, you know, I'm an equal partner that like does a fraction of the work that he does. So, <laughs> uh, no. So, like, uh, what have you been up to uh, since then? Like, um, I know, like, obviously, right now with the strikes and everything else that have been going on, um, I know that there's a lot that's probably not happening. But I didn't know if you were. Any new projects that you're working on or anything like that? Any new routines or any like a uh, place that you've performed since then? Or Yeah, uh, I'm on strike. Um, so actually, well, no, I can talk about how we roll. But it is it, it is funny because w one of the things I, I do like on TikTok is, um, you know, all the videos and VHS tapes and stuff. Um, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and I was like. I should probably ask SAG because it, because immediately on TikTok and just across social media, but that's, you know, the king of the mountain right now. A lot of the accounts who like, like, like promote movies or review movies, 
really like promote movies. That was that was the problem. And then people were like, "Well, you're kind of scabbing." Um, and then some people put their foot, their feet in their mouths by you know being like, "Well, I'm not in the union. I don't care about the union." Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then uh, I was like, "Well, obviously I'm not going to be like promoting." barbie or oppenheimer or anything but like some random blu-ray i have of of you know prison girls in 3d <laughs> does, does that fall under the amptp agreement so uh I, I had to find someone at sag to talk to it'd be like you know what and then it became this there's a database of the projects that you know fall under the strike fall because it it is it's like you know like even like you know, like I have a Blu-ray of, um, you know, a movie from 1955 that they were like, well, no, you wouldn't be able to. She was like, look, if you if you like professionally review things like a Siskel and Ebert or if you were just talking about the technical aspects of the transfer onto 4K or Blu-ray or what have you, that would that's fine. But anything other than that would be considered promoting the movie and you're, you know would be you know uh, crossing the picket line in that respect so it's it's, it's interesting yeah. to now i'm like emailing my contact at sag and i'm like is the movie from 2023 puppet shark okay <laughs> and then they i'll check on my end they double check and they're like puppet shark is good to go <laughs> so oh yeah no it's like what cracks me up is like there's a okay there's these screenwriting groups i'm in on facebook and it I'm a former member of the uh, WGA. I was in the WGA for a couple of years. Uh, but the thing is, what cracks me up is that there are people that do not understand how these unions work. And if you want to ever even have a shot at getting into them, like I'm trying to get back into the WGA now. Uh, so the thing is, well, not right now, but in the future, uh, there was a guy that posted one of these groups like, oh, yeah, I have a meeting with a producer to sell my script. I wrote down there. I was like, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's like if you sell that script, you make sure that you pull something like from a uh, scream where the guy's script went into a bidding war and he sold it for a million dollars, which is a small percentage of scripts that get sold, a very small percentage. So it's like a unicorn. Um, I told him, like, so you make sure you make a lot and then get ready to never do anything professionally ever again because they will never let you in there and they will nick, they'll, they'll put red tape all, over, all around your projects. Like you'll get I mean, blacklisted. Yeah. So, it's like, uh, it's this is where it's 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 life or death you know this is this is this is the bit <laughs> suddenly i'm i'm uh uh who, who's the guy in godfather 2 this is the business oh. <laughs> yeah the last the last thing you want to do is pull a kim kardashian with uh, was the american horror story says like i'm on set at ams like what are you guys doing and someone else is like not crossing the picket line <laughs> sorry kim <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. god. Well, all the money in the world cannot buy an ounce of brains. So, oh god, that woman. Um, it's okay. I don't ever intend to be a side or to work with Kim. So I think I can actually talk some smack about her. But um, but no. So it's like, so what have you been like? I mean, when are you going to like the picket lines, like the WGA picket lines? Have you been to any of those? Like and seen? I don't know. Sometimes the chaos that's out there, you know. Uh, uh no i haven't made it over yet i probably will at some point i mean it's um i like i mentioned like i have a kid we don't yeah. have a you know a ton of help i mean we don't have any family out here in the in on the west coast so it's you know um also i tend to sunburn so i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> Um, also it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's weird. A lot of the, um, a lot of people in my feed are like, like taking selfies with like famous people on the picket line, which yeah, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a bummer, but, uh, no, I mean, I, I need to go over at some point, but I mean, it is, it's, it, it's, it's just something kind of always comes up during the week either dad stuff or you know i got the wrestling podcast i got you know i commercials are still working so i have auditions that i'm trying to do i got vhs tapes i gotta watch <laughs> 
Oh God, I need, I need to get my collection from Florida. I've only got like 800 VHS tapes at my uh, at my old man's house. I've got classics too. Like I've got like some of the classic movies. Like what was it? Like the Full Moon movies, like uh, Subspecies, Leprechaun. All those, uh, you old... know, you know, available on Blu-ray now. Is it Blu-ray or is it DVD? I think they cleared this one. Subspecies Five. Oh, yeah, that's I, awesome! I, have, I, I haven't seen that one yet. I don't see that on my shelf of not cleared. Unless they haven't gotten back to me on that one, I can't imagine that Full Moon is in the AMPTP. Like, yeah. like all the trauma movies. Like, it, oh there yeah, was, there was one. <laughs> there was one trauma trauma mo- yeah, there was one trauma movie stuck on you that, like, she's like, okay, that one's not cleared, and I'm like, I am positive she thinks I'm talking about the the Matt Damon movie. Yeah, the Fairly Brothers movie. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that a trauma movie from like 81 that I think Lloyd Kaufman himself actually directed. It's so early, like it was still doing like the sex, like kind of Porky's knockoff stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And before they really found their voice with uh, Toxic Avenger. And then it's like, oh, we, we do gross stuff. So funny. Oh yeah. Well, well, now, now you have like Toxic Avenger, which may very well end up in the uh, AMTP. Like, uh, just be like, you know, you have like the Peter Dinklage movie that's coming out. Sure. Uh, and I, I assume they're going to have him voice Toxie or um, have him like do what they did with him in, I guess, like the Avengers movie, where he's like a, you know, he's a dwarf, but he's like a really big version of himself as Toxie. That would be hysterical. Um, I hope that's what it is, but that'd be awesome. Uh, but no, it's like, uh, I was thinking like, you know, with, uh, movies like, uh, cause I'm a huge, I love, uh, Lloyd Kaufman. I love, uh, Tromeo and Juliet. And then you also have, uh, what was it? Cannibal, the musical, um, one of Cannibal our previous, musical, yeah. one of our previous guests, uh, Kelly, um, she's an independent producer, uh, she's made a few films, made a feature film, all that stuff. Uh, her sister is actually an old friend of mine and she's the one that got me into a lot of the trauma stuff. Because she and I like the very, very obscure movies. Like, I mean, she loves, she, I, I had her watch a repo, a genetic opera, just uh-huh. so I could laugh at. And then she showed me, uh, what was it, Cannibal the Musical, which I just thought was hysterical. But, um, but yeah, like, no, it's, uh, see, like those movies, like, I can imagine, I didn't know that you were actually handcuffed in what you could and could not talk to because I didn't know that promoting any, well, not like so much promoting, but discussing it could actually, get you like in trouble with uh with no, i mean i can discuss it but it's 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 like i can't be like you know because because i i get you know I, after a long series of emails and posting videos and you know finding like actual people i can talk to to be like look i have this many followers basically all, all i'm doing is like it's it's the gimmick in um in summer school where they're like the, the sunglasses break so he writes a letter and and then they send him free sunglasses and they, they, this happened when we we're on the pete Holmes show like he mentioned captain crunch once and suddenly we got like a, a bunch of boxes of captain crunch i still have this <laughs> captain crunch bowl with like a handle on it um oh that's so like, awesome I, like i mentioned yingling when i was on um oh. this is when i was still drinking when i was on uh at midnight and i kept emailing yingling where i was like i mentioned your product on comedy central send me a case of beer and they sent me a hat and a t-shirt so long story short i'm like (laughs) i have a bunch of followers i talk about movies send me free movies and i'll tell people because that's all i want is just more crap for my shelves yeah more free shit that's all anybody wants and if and if it can be a you know a sweet ass you know uh, 4K of you know children shouldn't play with dead things. Then God damn it! I now we're <laughs> now we're talking. Because oh, there's other God. people on TikTok who like the, some of the movies they they are promoting or that they get. I'm like, Jesus, there's no accounting for taste. I'm like, I get some of these emails from the PR people, and I'm like, I don't give a shit about that piece of crap. Why would I want to own it and tell people that they can own it? Like that's. <laughs> No, man, no. Like, you know, come on over here. It's like uh, the the um, 
Invaders from Mars is on 4K. Let's let's talk about that. Now we're talking. See, that, I was actually at one point I was thinking long and hard about having some like just some kind of TikTok content because I have my page and I've got like I think like around like five or six thousand followers. Just like just I think off of one stupid video I made, but um. I'm trying to find like just something to do to make myself laugh. And I was thinking at one point, it's like, you know what? I just watched, oh God, what was that movie? Um, Basket Case. Right. Like um, I, I'm, I go crazy over old school classic 80s horror, like the uh, 70s horror, the d really dumb ones too. You know, uh, the reanimator, things like that. Mm. I'm like, oh, I can talk about these movies. So I was just like movies that are very obscure that just were not really that great. Like, I don't know, like uh, Troll 2. Um, just tons of bad acting in that movie. I don't know if Josh, if you've ever seen Troll Two, um, it's <laughs> there. You go. If you've if you've never seen that movie, Josh, you owe it to yourself to sit down and watch it. It's you know a horror movie. I don't think but, it's really uh, obscure I, though. Well, I think it's gotten to, like famous like clips. I think if you're to show parts of it, and the fact that it's even Troll Two, it's nothing like the first movie. Uh, it's really. Nothing and there's no it. trolls in it at all. Aren't they, they goblins in like the town yeah. of Nil, the town of Nilbog or something? It's my favorite line in the movie. The like, kid goes, uh, he, all of a sudden it just hits him like a bucket of water. He goes, Nilbog, Nilbog is goblin spelled backwards. <laughs> it's so stupid. My wife like, showed me that movie when we were dating. <laughs> Did you look at her like just like what the hell's wrong with you? I fucking started shopping for rings that night. Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I was like, I think I showed it to um I showed it to Danielle, like you know, like I showed it to her. And the uh the scene where the witch is like under the disguise of like a younger and uh, like well, the actress is still the same actress, but like she's like more attractive and she's walking up to like this trailer in the woods and she's asking a guy if he's hungry and she breaks out like a like a corn cob. And she starts kissing him as she's kissing him. You see popcorn flying everywhere. It's so stupid. But it's just like, she looks at me. She was like, you watch this shit. Like, well, yeah, it's brilliant. It's stupid. <laughs> In the documentary about it, the, 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 the actress she's, who plays the daughter, she starts talking about how like the, the guys who like the producers and the director Mm -hmm. Like they they weren't from America. I don't know where they were from, and like English wasn't their first language. And they had like this idea of what American teenagers acted like and stuff, and all these phrases and stuff that were weird. And then the other movie that I I haven't found much information about this. I should ask the guys from the Found Footage Festival because they finally like showed this this movie Pulse Beat. Oh about, wow! Um, you... I know. About it. A... Do you know this one? I know that one. It's about aerobic instructors and the, uh, the 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 plot is it's the exact same plot as uh, dodgeball. It's like he's going to lose his place unless they win this competition. And then the big place is going to take over. Um, and the guy who stars in it, uh, I don't even think his name is on the box. Oh, yeah. Daniel Green. The only other time I've seen him. He shows up in one of the uh, Elvira movies. If she made more than one, maybe just that one Elvira movie. He's got the line where, you know, classic, classic Elvira set up punch. Like she falls down and he says, how's your head? And she says, I've never, I haven't had any complaints yet. Um, <laughs> and then the only other time I ever saw him was he was in the background in... What was that? Uh, what was that? Larry David HBO movie he made, like Restart or Reset or uh, that one? I'm not too sure. You see, you know, it's like they, it's like the, the the world restarts and everything is, you know, the way it should be. Like like power outlets aren't on the ground. You don't have to bend over. They're up here, and he's got like a long beard and long hair and stuff. It was a big hit. Was but anyway, the all I can see on IMDb is the guy who wrote and directed it. That's all he ever did. And I was like, it has to be a similar case of he didn't really understand American culture or how to make a movie or something or like a rich dad or I don't know what. 
but um that's always been my theory but i can't find anything else about uh, like about the behind the scenes of it and i'm fascinated by that movie it's it's truly dumb see i think that would actually make a really great content right there like i mean like me josh and i were talking about something to do with uh, not just wadcast because we have other you know we have other things that, that come under our company wadco media um, and we haven't had a new show for, uh, with our, uh, friend Jen who hosts or co-hosts another show called 10 to one. They have like a, a list show, uh, talking about like movies and everything else. But I think it'd be fascinating if you could, uh, there's this one guy, he's on YouTube. It's called, uh, Minty Comedic Arts. Uh, he's, uh, he's Australian, uh, but he actually goes to like all the trivia that I'm pretty sure he reads off of IMDb, but he makes an entire like thing, a whole like half hour episode about this stuff. But there are some of these movies that you look at, you're thinking, what the hell were they thinking when they made this? Like, just like how people act and everything else. Uh, just, yeah, you know, just, I don't know. It's like the, uh, going back to like the 80s uh, slasher movies. Uh, just, you know, if you're watching like an 80s slasher movie, you know there's going to be some girl running around topless somewhere for no reason whatsoever. Like, I would sound love like, to know the thought process like a complaint. of this. Oh no, there's no complaint. I just wanted to know the thought process behind it. Like, <laughs> hey, you know what? The killer's about to slash someone's head off. Let's go ahead. What do we right here, buddy? Gratuitous nudity. That sounds really gratuitous nudity. What you gonna That's be doing? What... Running, running. <laughs> there is something funny about um, Clear History is the name of the Larry David movie. Um, okay. There is something funny about like things being lost in translation when it comes to you know cinema or at least the making of movies because um what's his name uh who's who's uh, the, the dad on that 70s show you know he played a bad guy in um robocop in yeah in robocop and he was talking about um um the director of robocop like him and the cinematographer are both from you know wherever um and I can't think of the director's name, but he's great. Like I, I'm such a huge fan of his movies. They're hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he tells a story about uh, when his character comes into um, an apartment, and the 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 sleazy exec uh, has like he's with like some you know lascivious young women. Oh yeah. And his and his <laughs> oh, line yeah. is he he walks in and he's got his gun. And he goes. <laughs> He goes, bitches leave. Yeah. <laughs> and he said that when uh, uh, Verhoeven was uh, trying to block the scene with the with the cinematographer, he just he didn't call the actresses by their names. He just kept calling them bitches. He's like, <laughs> he's like uh, so when should the bitches leave? Should, should the bitches leave when he says bitches leave or the bitches? Okay, bitch. And then when they, they shot the scene, and then you know when actors are wrapped, it's uh, like okay, everybody, Matt McCarthy, he's a rap thing. A big run. He goes okay, big round of applause for the bitches. Everybody, uh, follow up for the bitches. It's insane. That's awesome. It's I insane. did not know that. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh God. Like I would love to find those actresses. Oh my God! And be like, "Hey, uh, one of your hoven uh, called you a bunch of bitches." Uh, he just would not call you by your names. He didn't know your name, so he just kept referring to you as. A... What was that like? <laughs> How was that for you? <laughs> just imagine if, like, one of the ones like just absolutely hates being called a bitch. Absolutely hates it. Can you imagine that? And just kept getting called one, like just innocently, you know, by some guy. Just like it's like a Mister. If Mr. Bean like spoke more, that'd be like a Mr. Bean thing. It's like the whole like yeah. when he comes to America, he's flipping everyone off because he thinks that's like an American hello. But right. But uh, and Josh, you were awfully silent here. So what you what, what do you what do you have to what do you have I, burning I in your brain right interrupt. now? Interrupt. I didn't want to interrupt. Josh is angry. Josh is angry. Josh Josh is angry with the bitches. <laughs> always always angry. That's my secret, Brandon. I'm always angry. Yeah, you gonna Josh out? No, no. Gonna turn, the, yeah, gonna turn into the Incredible Hulk, the Incredible Joke. <clears throat> That's so weird. I was just watching um, the Incredible Hulk. I was watching the original one, oh, not the original. I'm sorry, the 2003 one uh, with Eric Bana the other night. Oh no, I was watching Bill Bixby from 1977. The good one. I didn't realize. I mean first started i was like 
you know, it does it doesn't have the opening. It just says Bill Bixby in the Incredible Hulk, and I was like, oh, this was like a, a move, like a made for TV movie pilot. And then I started watching the second episode, and, and as it's going on, I was like, like the sun's starting to go down. I was like, holy shit! Like this was the, I didn't realize they did two in the same month made for TV movies, like back to back. It was it was just another you know ninety minute romp with the uh with the incredible hulk but it was so good but i was like uh looking at because i was like i recognized some of the actors in the second one and as i was looking at the imdb you know who the narrator was for the incredible hulk no lurch from the adams family that that guy actually speaks the, like lurch is the one who's like David Banner, but the, the world assumes that David oh, Banner is dead, God, and he must let them think that he is dead until he can control the raging beast within him. That just takes away so... I did not know that was him. I had no yeah. clue that was uh, Lurch. That takes away so many... Well, damn it. Okay. Now I can and and apparently, I apparently he made the noises when the Hulk would roar and stuff. Uh, that makes... Yeah, that... Like I get a, that, like a, like a Darth Vader type situation where you had Lou Ferrigno just doing the acting, yeah, and then this this seasoned, you know, voiceover guy. Couldn't believe it. Or yeah, you know, Twisted Metal. We we talked about Twisted Metal a couple weeks back with uh, Will Arnett and Samoa Joe doing the. Oh Hulk yeah, Hulk yeah. Tag teaming onto the one character. Oh, is, is that the deal? I haven't watched it. Yeah, oh, Joe okay. is uh, sweet to does a great physical. job. And Will Arnett does the voice. That's hilarious. Oh, he, oh, dude! Did you see the uh, the like um, like you know? Again, I know we got watched a lot with the whole sag and everything else, but did you see the uh, trailer with? Um, well, I guess like it was a sneak peek when it before it came out with uh, Anthony Mac like uh, Anthony what's uh, God what's his name? Um, just the them. Mackley. Mackey. 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 Anthony Mackey and uh, like you know, and Sweet Tooth, where they're in like a casino kind of thing, and they're singing like the thong song. By Cisco. Did you say you didn't see that at all? Me? No. Yeah. Oh my god, that shit is hysterical. Like easily, Sweet Tooth is one of my favorite characters in Twisted Metal, but no, it's great. But the funniest thing is with uh, the Incredible Hulk, the original uh, series. And like as you said, like you didn't know that they made like two of them, but apparently that was how they actually really pitched um, <clears throat> like a lot of uh, pilots back then, like oh, with the superhero ones, because I think the Spider Man. Uh, show started off as like an hour and a half movie pilot, and they even had one for Doctor Strange that never went anywhere. Which the Doctor Strange one is hysterical if you watch it. Uh, it's really oh, not. Yeah, yeah, it's really. Not. And they, I've uh, seen that. And they also had one I cannot find. I've been looking for it for years. I don't know if it's just promotional pictures, but they had one for uh, Daredevil and Black Widow, I think. Uh, back in like the sixties or seventies, but there's just like this really bad Daredevil costume. It's it's horrible. I know Daredevil was in like the trial of the Incredible Hulk, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Matt Murdock and everything else. And there was even like Hulk versus uh, Thor, one of the uh, another TV movie. Oh, I got that. Those, those are great times, man. Those are great great shows. You know what's funny is the um, uh, the actor Ted Cassidy, who was who was Lurch. I didn't realize he was. First of all, he played Harvey in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, the guy who's he's about to get into a Bowie knife fight with Paul Newman. I don't know if you remember that scene in the movie. Oh, that's then, him? Um, that's him. Oh, shit, dude. That's Lurch. And then he was also the voice of uh, the demon uh, Balzaroth in the Doctor Strange TV movie. <laughs> oh, 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 my perfect. God. All ties together. <laughs> It's a you know, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I posted something somewhere the other day, like thinking like, oh, uh, there's a universe that no one is talking about that we all need. And it's the A-team with Knight Rider and Airwolf. I mean, how that hasn't happened, it very well may happen just because it, it's so like if, if one company owns all that IP, it just all it takes is one smart young man once the strike is up to just walk in and be like, Hey, here's something. Here's just, something these kids will love. Just walk into an executive's office. Don't even stop at like, you know, reception. Just keep walking. Like you own the place, walk into reception, 
I'm sorry, walked into the executive office and just slammed this screenplay down on his desk. Boom. What's this? A team, Airwolf, and Knight Rider. And then Captain Power comes in and he starts fucking shit up too. There's my one per episode. Um, on. let's, let's back that up for a second. You know, you, you, uh, you say you go in, you, you slam the script on the desk. Yeah. Boom, right. Um, and they go, what's that? The, the only answer you need to uh, have is that's a billion dollars. Get it done. And then walk out. <laughs> when the strike is over, it's very tempting to try this. <laughs> But in my works as a security guard over at uh, Universal, be like, "Hey, need you to let me through, buddy." <laughs> I mean, we're 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 gonna get it more, more crossover. I mean, what Transformers just set up the GI Joe crossover? Yeah, yeah. That I, my God, I took my uh, my son and his cousins to that movie, and I was in and out of consciousness. But um, at the I end, just... when the guy's like, he's like, "We could use somebody like you," I was like, "I was like, all right." All right, I'm excited. I see. I loved it when Mega Man showed up. That was my favorite part of the whole movie when they went to, like when <clears throat> when Mega Man shows up at the end of the movie, and he starts kicking Scourge's ass. That was my favorite part because that's all I could think of when I was watching this movie in theaters. Is when like you know the uh, uh like when the guy had like the robot thing forming all over him, and I see the big Ramos. ass like, huh? It's an Anthony Ramos. Anthony Ramos. When he had uh, when he had Mirage, like you know, like the machinery from Mirage, like forming all over him and turning him into Mega Man. As I'm watching, this, I'm like, oh, he looks like Mega Man, and then he has a giant arm cannon that comes out. I'm like, oh, this is, <laughs> oh man, I think I said that somewhere to piss off a lot of people because they're like apparently huge fans of this movie. I'm like it was okay. I thought I thought Bumblebee was probably one of the best Transformers movies so far, but you know, I, Beast Wars was. There are people who okay. like I these. The Transformer movies suck from top I, to bottom. I just like I can't I can't take the Michael Bay ones where it's like it, you get motion you get dizzy watching his movies. Oh no, they're 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 god awful. Like it's, but you said that you said to certain people like oh no they're great like no there's not great no no, it, 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 no there's no <laughs> counting for taste. But some people are just straight up unintelligent. Like that's just the bottom Absolutely line. Absolutely true. <clears throat> no, I told yes. someone you want to see some cool Transformer, like some more modern Transformer shit that's really going, that's really awesome. Go on Netflix. The newer Transformers, like you know, shows that they have on there, the whole like CGI ones they have, are actually pretty damn good. So it's like the whole world Cybertron, all this stuff. Those are those are amazing stories. But we just keep seeing every Transformers movie that has come out has one, I guess, like really one form of suspense, just one. And it is always the humans trying not to get crushed because they're too close to a bunch of like hundred foot robots fighting and rolling around. And they're always just barely missing the humans. So, and then you never hear really much about the casualties in most of these movies. Like, you know, humans getting thrown off of bridges and everything else. You never hear about them. Just, you know, Transformers fighting. So, oh God, um, we, we need, we need like better content these days. If you're going to, if you're going to make movies off of our, and the, if you want to make movies off of our toys for Christ's sake, they have a movie coming out for the magic eight ball. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, it, it, anything I look, they, they made Legos into a good movie. So I, I'll give anything a chance. No, the Lego movies are awesome. Lego Batman was hysterical, but, um, I don't know. It's like oh, the, the way they're cranking like just stuff out these days. It's just you know. Well, the problem is, is they saw how much money Barbie made, and they're like, "Oh, good. People want movies about toys." It's like, <laughs> I, I don't think any of that's, you watched the movie. Yeah, I think that's all they got from is like, "Oh, it's oh Mattel." Like, let's see what else Mattel has. <laughs> and hey, let's do my mask movie. Mask. Wow. Mask. Uh, about Thundercats, man? Come on, Thundercats, Tiger Sharks, Silverhawks. Centro Centurions. Yeah, yeah, sure. All the good shit. They were yeah, trying how, to develop how, a, a Viewmaster movie. I I remember that. I don't think I heard about that one. Well, I That's... they tried to develop it and it's not I don't I don't think it's being made. Huh. You know what would be hysterical is if they came out with a GoBots movie and it did better than Transformers. I'd see that. Oh, what's the hell out of GoBots? Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
I don't remember where I heard about this, but GoBots are canon in Marvel in the MCU. Then let's do a damn crossover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very possible that from the uh, from what was it the the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, uh, Trax got mad that somebody was dressed like a GoBot. It was like they killed my family, and then it's like, oh, they're real. The GoBots are real in the MCU. Oh, oh, where's that movie? <laughs> so you're talking about having Drax go against the GoBots. I'm down. Oh my God. Uh, no, I can't wait for the strike to be over. There's like there's so many things I'm that I'm supposed to be working on. This strike is just killing all of it. So there's so many good ideas that need to be done. Hey, nobody is stopping Neil Breen from making original content. Matt, do you watch any of those Neil Breen movies at all? I mean, I know of them. I've never watched them. Um Josh is a huge fan. Yeah, well, I, I, mean, I, I I hear they're you know, just the the lowest of the the low. <laughs> I mean, if if you're if you're a a person that is interested oh, God. in making films, right, and you watch these movies, you get this sense of hope. Like, <laughs> I can do this. This is I, yeah. not hard. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, in, in anyone's defense, <clears throat> there's another production company. Um, I'm not going to talk. Listen, I've said this last uh, two weeks ago on the show. <clears throat> if you're making a movie, you're already light years ahead of people that just talk about doing it. You're, you're actually doing it. Even if it's not su successful and if it's just like really, really bad, uh, you're still way ahead of other people that just haven't even made, even written a script yet. Uh, that said, I'm not going to make fun of the guy because he's doing it, but I will poke fun at the movies because of uh, how they are made. Uh, Matt, there's this guy, I forget his name, but the name of the company that Josh introduced me to is called Anflix. And uh, this guy, there's um, Josh and I are both from Jacksonville, Florida. So there's this uh, movie. What, what was it, Josh, about the mob? The Born Russian mob? Mafia. Born in the Mafia. Uh, it's just everyone's talking with like over the top Russian accents. Some of them, most of them, well, some of them are real, most of them are not. And they're filming this inside, like complete guerrilla style. It takes balls to do this, but guerrilla style inside the Jacksonville airport. Past security and everything else. I, I guess they got through security and they're filming like at gates <clears throat> where their camera is actually making a movie. But these movies are bad. Like these guys are risking prison time to make a really bad movie, but they're making these movies. Uh, I recommend you check them out on YouTube. I think all their stuff is on there. They, this guy cranks out. I think like was cranking out at one point, uh, three feature length movies. I want to say like a year, just putting them out like back to back to back to back to back. Neil Breen's at least taking his time with shitty movies. This guy's just cranking them. So well, I think the 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 big difference is Neil Breen. You know he he has his money then he puts into hiring you know whoever he needs to hire uh to make a movie while you know the guys on Antflix it's hey I'm going to call my call my buddies and we're going to make a movie because I just finished my script I think that's that's the major difference uh, between whatever Neil's willing to spend as a budget versus these guys that might have 20 bucks Fair enough. What did you pull off the shelf there, Matt? I saw you like, you know, study a study look at something. This is from um, the mind of Mark Polania, uh, Wild Eye releasing <clears throat> Cocaine Shark. Mm. And trust me when I say, at no point in this film does a shark do cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so just the, just because of cocaine bear, they're throwing cocaine everything. I mean, and it must have been so last minute that when you watch this, I wound up watching this like <laughs> three times. One time, I just I just sat down and watched it all the way through, oh, and then I watched it again to like try to make sense of it. Yeah, 
and then I watched it with the director's commentary. And if you watch it with the director's commentary, he keeps referring to it as narco shark. So clearly this, this, which also makes no sense. And clearly like at the last minute, they were like, wait, we'll call it cocaine shark. And look at this on the back. It says, you're going to need a bigger nose. <laughs> this movie is about a oh, undercover cop who is like <laughs> uh, trying to bust this drug dealer who's also doing experiments on animals and he's like narrating the movie then about a third of the way in and and like he wakes up like like chained to a bed to a hospital bed and he starts thinking about everything that happened the last month while he's recalling the last month about a third of the way in suddenly a scientist starts narrating the movie and is explaining that he worked for the drug dealer and then he made like a spider shark a a man shark that can walk around and also like a like a a, a a like a bat shark i can't even remember it's like a bat shark or something and then there's a drug that they're like extracting from sharks that makes you trip and think that you're a shark and so when the cop is undercover he does it and then and then at the end well, first of all, also at the very beginning of the third act, this guy has had a beard the whole movie. When he wakes up in the hospital bed a month later, he has the same beard. At the very beginning of the third act, he's totally clean shaven and they don't address it or talk about it at all. <laughs> then his girlfriend who works for the drug dealer betrays him. And then we're like led to believe that he is the the shark, the man shark, like he turns into it. It. I've watched this movie three times, and I just did a bang up A plus four point job explaining the plot. And there's no. <laughs> I'm gonna. Where, where did you get this from? Um, you could get that uh, probably wherever you buy terrible DVDs or on MVD, their website. They're the ones who sent this to me. They have some real far out crap on that website and I, they have some really good stuff too he says mvd but, uh, yeah mvd they 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 have great stuff but they also have so much bad but it's you know they sell all, all sorts of discs so you can get like movies by like you know cauldron on there or um uh you can get like some arrow blu-rays on there and stuff they also have great uh, selection of music but that they, they're also involved like mdv M, mvd visual also like they're involved in producing some stuff so like they also just re-released um the andy kaufman wrestling documentary i'm from hollywood okay um yeah all sorts of great stuff see i'm gonna have to see i'm gonna have to check this some i'm gonna have to check this out i'm gonna see if i can find online yeah. watch it and i'll add it to my collection because i already uh, i did buy uh my very own uh, copies of uh, <clears throat> Santa Jaws. Uh, no regrets there. Uh, but then I also bought a copy of Velocipaster. I um, don't know if you've ever watched Velocipaster or not. It's as good as it sounds. Oh, I'm sure. A pastor that turns into a dinosaur uh, randomly. And it's... There's one line in this movie that with um, with Danielle, I told her you need to watch this one, like just 15 minutes and 15 minutes on the clock. Just that's all I recommend of this movie, unless you're going to watch something really mindless and stupid that you cannot follow along. Because there's even ninjas that come out of nowhere and start fighting this hysterically fake looking dinosaur. Um, but 15 minutes in, watch it. I can hear her watching this in the other room, and I hear her cracking the hell up 15 minutes later. She comes out. I'm like, did you find out why that pimp is called Frankie Mermaid? She's like, she's like, because he's swimming in bitches. 
That's it's like, brilliant. Tom last line, that's so great. It's like, hey, 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 ho. Why do they call me Frankie Mermaid? She's like a lot of because you're swimming in bitches. What? Because you're swimming in bitches. Because I'm swimming in bitches. <laughs> the most brilliant line of any independent horror film I've heard in years. I couldn't stop laughing at that. Give that man an Academy Award. I'm, that, that is some Academy Award, Award worthy writing right there, man. I promise you. Uh, but, I'm just looking at this guy's <laughs> Wikipedia page, the Polania brothers, because it, I, by on my count, they released six movies last year. Okay. So that's, that's a movie every two months. And it appears that he lives in Pennsylvania. Like you look at the IMDb of cocaine shark and then look at the cast list of every other, other movie he does. It's, it's just the same people. Um, like Adam Sandler. At the, at the end of yeah, exactly. Except you know, is if if Adam Sandler and David Spade like were next door neighbors. Um, at the end of the commentary, as the credits start, he's like, "All right, well, if you like Cocaine Shark, you can check out all of our other shark movies. We have Doll Shark, Amityville in Space, Sharkula, um, Noah's Shark." Jurassic Shark. No, no was shark. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Virus Shark. These guys like sharks, huh? Shark Encounters of the Third Kind. Sharkula. Yeah. Sharkula. That's hysterical. Sharkula. Sharkula, buddies. Land Shark. I, I see a list of top 10 shark movies on oh, 10 yeah. to One's future. Sharkenstein. Yeah. <laughs> So he's got his own like universal dark universe, but with like sharks. Well, those are That's just the great. shark movies. I mean, there's you know Peter Rottentail, um, Pralian, Animal. A a excuse me, Pralian, Alien Predators. Sons of bitch. These sons of bitch. <laughs> Dune World, Ghost of Camp Blood. It kills, and it's a clown. Okay. Yeah. Food okay. versus zombies. All right. I mean, you're, you're peaking. You know what? I'm, 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 yeah, me too. I'm actually, I'm looking at this like, you know what? I like really bad horror movies. I'm going but to have to. It's, it's, it is. It's, but it's the Troll 2 syndrome where it's like, okay, yeah. cocaine shark, I'm in. And then you're watching it. You're like, this should have been called Spider Shark because that's what this was. Even the idea that he was going to call it Narco Shark. Oh. I'm like, this, this is, you're wrong. This is okay. wrong. I found it. Oh, it's I. I found one. I'm going to watch tonight. Um, I used to. I bought like a. I bought an elf on a shelf years ago, just like make myself laugh. And uh, my whole thing was every year, I would have him gagged and bagged and gag bagged and hog tied, like on my coffee table. And my conversation piece would be like, "Yeah, this bitch ain't going to snitch on anyone." You know, whatever. There's a movie that he made called Hell on the Shelf. And it's an Elf on the Shelf movie. That is amazing. An antique Christmas elf decoration holds the key to decades of pent up evil and anger from from beyond the grave. And it's my kind of really bad horror movie because it is a three point two out of ten on IMDb. Oh uh, yeah, this is happening tonight. Matt, damn good recommendations there, buddy. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you on a rabbit hole here. Uh, you know, it's important that people support independent film, and if shot on video in your backyard, low budget cults is no? your bag, and you want to support the local economy of Wellsboro, Pennsylvania, then this is the place for you. Oh yeah, uh, some buddies of mine. Uh, show, well, I'm sorry, like I shouldn't say the rest of them are buddies. They're guys that I've uh, spoken with. But a friend of mine from college, um, we were both grooms at another friend's wedding. Uh, he produced this movie in Pennsylvania called Bigfoot the Movie. I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, we're actually trying to get. I'm, I'm trying to get uh, Joel on the show here to talk about it. But uh, the movie performed well enough with the independent circuit that it actually called like people are clam like not clamoring, but People are excited about the prospect of a sequel to this movie. And it's just a really dumb horror comedy, but it, it has moments where it's absolutely hysterical. But, you know, you can tell when someone's just making a movie that 
they don't take seriously the way like like some of the worst horror films are the ones that they think are the filmmakers think are going to be like these really really awesome and really i guess like deep and metaphorical horror films yeah you can almost taste the earnestness yeah yeah there's there's sometimes like okay like the 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 guys thought this was actually going to be like a serious movie it's like watching like uh the room with tumble usl and like you know back when he made it and he wanted to be like a uh profound dramatic movie and then it just became infamous for not being dramatic or well, being over dramatic but just being absolutely hysterical for all the wrong reasons and now he says so he's he's always meant admitted to be a comedy or something but that which is so insulting uh, do you remember what was it was it on netflix or was it on amazon he had a um <clears throat> a sitcom set in a uh, like a, a an apartment building, and he played like the super. Josh, was was I talking to you? Was I talking to you about this? Uh, you were mentioning it, yeah. Yeah, it's the one where he has like two characters, right? He's a superintendent. And he also yeah. plays like a young like high school kid with like a letter jet. My God, I thought that was only one. Like that. See, that's how you know the people that like watch obscure things. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like it's 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 it, it's really like enraging for me to watch that because it's like <laughs> like watching people think that they're being funny is like it's really fucking rough you know Listen, he's also got a uh, he had a web series where he was abducted by an alien and he was forced to play video games that sounds familiar and uh, <clears throat> uh yeah i don't know that though yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 full of like Tom Uzo acting, Tom Uzo style acting, uh, the entire time. Um, like yeah, the uh, alien at one point is like Tom Uzo is like, well, prove prove to me you're an alien. Aside from the fact that it's like you know big gray head and big black eyes and everything else, and he like just does this to his head, and Tom Uzo starts holding it and says, ah, you're scrambling my brain, like you know, like just, okay, dude, <laughs> skip to the next one. Man, <laughs> narrating everything. Let's see. Tommy was so apartment. What is that? What is the name of that one? There's no oh. way it's still streaming somewhere. Man. The internet never forgets. You TV can still watch show. the. Uh, That's right. Everything's on the internet forever. <laughs> oh yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I had Josh watch the uh, the TV pilot for the Clerks TV show based on the movie in like the 1990s with Jim Brewer in it. And if you want to watch something horrible, absolutely like something that absolutely this show is like you know, the neighbors. That was the name of it, the neighbors from like 2014. The neighbors, fuck man. Is a sitcom oh, created, written, directed, produced, and acted by uh, I'm sorry, produced and starring uh Tommy Wessel. I never saw the clerks pilot. I remember the clerks animated series, and it was like and it it wasn't it wasn't good. But I was always I, I appreciated that the second episode was a clip show of the first episode. <laughs> I know. It was, I was so like, stupid. I'm like, man, that that's a big fucking swing. No, uh, Josh is a huge fan. Like you know, both of, both he and I like have like we both like you know love Kevin Smith movies. But uh, Josh, with his affinity for uh, the Clerks cartoon series. He's a huge, huge fan of it. Um, I am. I am. Oh uh, yeah. He he he. And he's made, he makes references like what we're talking all the time. I'll, I'll miss the reference. It's like it was in Clerks. Like I don't remember that being in Clerks in the TV show. Like the one you don't like, like the cartoon. I'm like, oh, okay. The, the TV show that actually got made. That's right. Okay, sorry. So when I like, say discreto burrito, yeah, it means something. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. I have to go back. Well, I already forgot what that like. Was that like a was? Is that a it's, restaurant it's or is it like that caused the lockdown when everyone thought the monkey <clears throat> was making yeah. everyone diseased? No? I feel like I'm going to have there to go back and watch the show. Episodes, man. There were six, <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to have to go back and watch the show, but I really don't want to. Well, yeah, you got and really, it. it's only five episodes because the second one was a clip. It's show. a clip show. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> Even less to sit through. Okay, that's fine. I'll go check it out. No, but um, some of these shows, it just cracks me up. What gets what gets put out there? But no, you, 
what I was saying, like with the whole Clerks TV um, versus like the neighbors. One thing I'll say about the Clerks TV show is that obviously it was made by you know by the studio, but it's like the studio didn't. The studio was they clearly did not watch the movie at all. If they did, they just wanted to try to improve on it, and it was just it was bad. Um, <clears throat> I'll post a link to. Oh, no, yeah, they're I'm like. Really cute. They're like I'll post oh, a link to it. The clerks movie. That's just, that's just about twenty somethings working <clears throat> at a convenience store, right? Yeah, we can write that. That's a, yeah, one of here. them's uh, you know quirky and kind of rude. The other one doesn't want to be there. Yeah, we got this. You don't need to watch the movie to make a sitcom about it. Yeah, plus Randall Graves was great in the uh, clerks movies, but like you know, like the Randall Graves in the uh, TV show was just it was bad. It was really bad. But um, but no. Uh, so meantime. Uh, there was something I was going to ask um, Matt here, but shit, give me a second. Uh, here, Josh, give me one second, guys. Sorry, one second. The professionalism of my partner never ceases to amaze me. He's gone. He left. He was here, but now he's gone. And oh, I liked it when he was here, really but now he's gone. So, do you have any anything upcoming? Any upcoming uh, shows? You know, I mean, I'll be on tour. Uh, I'm going to be on tour this fall with Pete Holmes. So you can go to PeteHolmes.com. Um, you know, anything grab the up Southeast? the tickets when. You can. Uh, yeah, we're going to be in Raleigh in um, uh, this month. Uh, we'll be in. I mean, these the shows sell out pretty quick. Um, we're going to be in Raleigh, and we're going to be in St. Louis. We're going to be in Salt Lake City. So go to PeteHolmes.com for more details. And I think another date just got added uh, in D.C. So if you're in the uh, the district, keep your eyes on the big guy's website. And uh, yeah, he, well, you know, we're touring around. Uh, I do about twenty minutes up top, um, working out some new stuff. I also do my um, my world famous professional wrestling fan routine, and um, I uh, I do this new thing where I I have a theory that every Billy Joel song is about drinking, <laughs> and so I put it to the yeah. test and I ask the people to name any Billy Joel song. Um, and then Pete's working on his new hour. We just recorded his hour in uh, Minneapolis, and that should be going up end of October, October twenty sixth. I think will be it'll be on Netflix. Um, yeah. yeah, and then we're just working on some new funny videos, and those should be dropping within the next couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, okay. So like, you know, like, so you guys are pretty much like working on like a whole bunch of. I, guess, I assume you guys are keeping these like uh, non-union related, um, obviously, right? Just like the uh, funny videos. Like, are you talking about like skits and everything? Yeah, these are just you know YouTube videos. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's something I actually was having to explain to somebody about how you can still make little skits. Like, even if you are a member of SAG or the WGA, you can still write skits. You can still do things like that. It's it's okay. You just can't go out like you know make things for TV and film and things of that nature. Or, or just... promote it, as Selena Gomez found out, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 projects that have fall under the AMPTP agreement that are that are struck right now. So, like, animation is still cool, you know, soap operas, uh, you know, commercials, like I mentioned earlier. I have yeah. an audition tomorrow for some, some goddamn wireless thing that I've never heard of. Um... And, and if I book the job, it's because they are a fantastic product run by <laughs> smart, interesting, creative people. Good safe. Very good safe. <laughs> Was it, is it cricket wireless? No, no. I feel like they only exist on like <laughs> Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> what is cricket wireless? That's honestly the only place I've ever even heard of it. Was like on like wrestling, trying to watch it with a, a buddy of mine out here. So, what's the one Ryan Reynolds owns? I think isn't it, it, isn't that cricket? 
Is that cricket? I think that is cricket. Josh, you have your like. I've got to look up my phone here, otherwise, like you know, this monitor is not working. Let me see. Cricket. Cricket. You got to know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. Nice. Like I know one? that. I know that's from something I've seen. Ninja Turtles. Mint. Mint Mobile. That's what he owns. Oh yeah, yeah, mint, mint. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did a commercial for Mint with uh, Linda Blair last year around this time. Wow. Like, Leading up to Halloween, yeah. Did they make your head spin? Folks, she was... Um, I hear she's a she sweetheart was, of a person. She was a trip. She was a trip. And uh, it was like, the, the, the big thing, because she does like animal rescue stuff. Mm -hmm. And and so the big thing was, you know, up top in the in the spot, she had to, she mentioned her anim, a, animal rescue gimmick. And then... Um, when we were shooting the deal, like I look at my phone bill and I, I don't use Mint Mobile. I use the other guy's thing. And then I get like green eyes like the Hulk. And then I projectile vomit, which that thing didn't work. Like it's, it's it feels like that's supposed to be easy. Just shooting pea soup out of a tube. But uh, you know these these things have a mind of their own, I guess, and um, so that was the difficult part. And then, uh, but talking to her, like I got a, I got a picture with her. It was her idea. I wasn't going to ask, you know, because you know people are weird, and I don't want to like I'm like you know, yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. she was like, she she, she was very. Um, I don't know, man. It was like at certain points, it was like just it was like man she she was at the the height of like if you like go to like her wikipedia you're like oh my god she dated every rock star from like the late 70s early 80s it was like you know and the way that she talked she was just like you want a picture we'll take a picture and i'm like i was just standing here but yes i do want to take a picture <laughs> and then um the way she was talking about the commercial she's like uh she's like uh he doesn't even know. Like she, she's saying this to me, but talking to me in the third person, and she's like, mm -hmm. "He doesn't even understand this thing. This you, you're going to be huge. At, like, like literally, she's saying like, you better get ready. You better get ready. He he has no idea what's going to happen when this thing hits the air. And I'm like, <laughs> this is like I we, there's it was just I'm like there's so much content first of all, but I'm like. Is, this is just a commercial, and I don't even think it's going to be on TV. I'm like, this, like, she, she, I was like, she, she was like talking to me, like trying to prepare me for the sudden overnight fame I was going to experience for being in this commercial with her. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> all the uh, all the conventions you're going to have a table for now. I mean, I'm I'll take it, I'll take it, but. I've I've been in this business. I've been in the. I, this is my twentieth time around the sun doing this rodeo. And uh, happy anniversary. Well, I appreciate someone saying it. Oh, happy birthday! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Happy birthday, Matt. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I'm trying That's to. Like, I'm listening to you guys while I'm uh, trying to look up this uh, cell phone commercial that you guys are in. Thank you. I apologize. Happy brother. Oh, Josh, you shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. No, truly, happy birthday. All sincerity. <laughs> Thank you so much for wishing me a happy birthday. You're welcome. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to... sorry that one got me. Well, welcome back to the Matt McCarthy podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to find this. Uh, yeah, sorry, put that down. I was like, I got really sidetracked. They're trying to find this. Uh, yeah, I want, yeah. To, I want to see. I want to see the commercial. Like, just. Well, I don't think it's like, been uh, snuffed out of existence since the show started. No, I'm going to look. Everything's gonna look on for, the internet forever. Yes, yeah, so I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look for this tonight. So. Yeah. Right, so there's a video of me walking around the giant ass. There's a. Uh, you know, there's a video of me walking around a giant purple mascot outfit, like all over, like on Facebook and other parts of the internet right now. So, 
that's uh yeah josh that the footage exists of uh, me as lighthouse pizza pirate so what, that one there. yeah that one right there there we go thank you josh you're welcome <laughs> i keep it on I, blue was, uh, like i'm uh, oh that, yeah blue what did i say purple yeah blue uh you know what like so that was my favorite job i ever had i got paid a lot of money to be a jackass like uh, i got paid really good money to mess with people that's all i did just everyone everyone was my target i just couldn't speak that was the hardest part so and i still did so i was i wasn't good at the not speaking part everything else was good but uh no so uh now i, I want to guys... bring up a little something oh go ahead and something ahead. we were talking about the other day and maybe maybe a bit of a a bit of a i don't know what how deep the cut is but matt um a number of years ago yeah you had uh, a little um a little album release right had a a vinyl album little uh that was the seven inch single for a pro wrestling fan hmm. so yes it exists brandon we were talking about that and uh i happened to have one here at the house and i'm yeah. selling them Matt's awesome. I've known this for a long time. So suck it, Brandon. <laughs> no, I, no I, I didn't know that this uh, existed. And he was telling me about this. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, and he was like, he was telling me like as if it was something that I don't want to say like as if something that I should feel like stupid for not knowing. I'm like, I, I didn't know there was you like a feel stupid vinyl. for not knowing. It. You should. And he's like, well, I have a vinyl. Do you have a vinyl? It was like, well, you said you saw him in New York City, like way back when. I was like, well, yeah, I did. It's like, do you have a vinyl? I don't have a vinyl. No. It's like, well, then you're not a fan. I'm like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> As like, I'm trying to tell him about like a real situation I'm having in life, and he keeps going back to his damn vinyl album. <laughs> you know what would make your life better? What if you had this vinyl album? Like, really, dude? That's right. <laughs> Made my life better. It's available on Capsule Records. I I have one. I have one box left. I have maybe like 15 left. If anybody's interested, they can hit me up. I'd be more than happy to buy one off you. Because I do have a record player. I just, um, I have uh, the best hits of Motown in my record player right now. So, but I, this would be more, this would be more than welcome on my uh, shelf of Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, and uh, Ghostbusters collectibles and the Funko Pop things that I made for me and Josh. I really need to ship out to you, Josh. At some point, I'll get them to you. Yeah. Yeah, but, that'd be nice. yeah, yeah, but no, I uh, <clears throat> trying to build my collectibles wall back again since all the other ones have pretty much been destroyed in the care of other people. So, you know, it'd be nice to have some more things to add to the, you know, mess up That's there. That's why I was curious. You, you, you're sure that these 800 videotapes are still at your dad's place? And I really, all... I really hope so. I, I have some really of like. I have the original, still sealed, uh, original release of um, Ghostbusters back when, like, they had like the case that, like, actually had to open the flap at the bottom of yeah. the movie out. Yeah. I had that. I had that, and it's still sealed, um, or was uh, still sealed. But my favorite movie that I have is this. Uh, I don't think it's obscure to like really true horror or sci-fi fans, but I have the um, original copy of Galaxy of Terror. With, um, you know, like, it's like this old... Um, have, have, have you ever heard of that, Matt? Maybe. What is it? It's just a, a bunch of people that end up on this uh, planet, and it is full of hostile aliens, but it's different kinds of aliens, and they kill people in different ways, and it's all very graphic. And I remember watching it as a kid. I didn't understand what was going on, but as an adult, I realized that there's a scene where there's a giant, like, worm or caterpillar... That is, I guess, having its way with a woman. I, I watched it like on Amazon Prime as like an adult. I'm like, wow, okay. Like, <laughs> I just thought that it was crushing her, and now I see it's actually doing other things. Um, but oh, so yeah, this is was, a Roger Corman movie. Yeah. Man, New World no, Pictures deserved better. It's it's an it's an old old ass movie. Uh, oh God, what's um. Damn, uh, Robert England is in it, and that's the only name I can think of that's actually in it that you know is familiar to me. But oh yeah, I had like I had so many things like just damn. Aaron Moran is in it. Is she? 
Oh my God. Aaron Moran, you know, Joni from Happy Days. And from what I understand, she loved Chachi. She did love Chachi. That is well documented. Okay. Wow. Ray Waldson from is, um, okay. Oh yeah, there are there are some my, fav my there. favorite Martian. Mr. Hand. <laughs> no, it's 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 worth a watch. I mean, it's like seeing these people in this movie that you would um otherwise see in more lighthearted things. It's it's really yeah, it's graphic, man. It is uh very but I mean it's 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 a great movie. I love it. It's just really I haven't watched it in a couple in a while now. I should get back to Sid Haig. All right. All right, I'll watch this. Yeah, I'll watch very this young steaming pile of a garbage. Very yeah, very <laughs> a very young Sid Haig is in it. Um no, it's it's my favorite part of my collection because this movie, I watched this thing so many times as a kid, and you can tell where there's parts of it that are like burnt out from my teenage years. I'm not going to get into which parts, but they're, you know, kind of like just like has it a little like it's been paused too long in these certain areas. We, but we uh, all have a copy of Fast Times. <laughs> we understand what you're talking about. Uh, Phoebe Cates. There's talk but, that it's uh, Event Horizon uh, ripped it off. Interesting. And I, I, I like, I, I see like, minor similarities like in design but beyond that like i mean event horizon was just i would love to see the director's cut to it that does not exist no more oh, no galaxy more galaxy of terror films. yeah oh no 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 to uh to event horizon uh no galaxy of terror like i mean i, I don't really see where it got ripped off like i mean i've watched i love event horizon i love uh, galaxy of terror i just they're two different movies, really. Like they're really just two completely different movies. But I don't know. I, uh, I, I, well, I didn't I'm hearing I'm, I'm hearing mixed things of Galaxy of Terror, or like of, of, of like the comparisons. Uh, well, this one sentence on the Wikipedia says one thing, and you're you're saying another. So uh, you know, I'm I'm hearing uh, there's a lot of people are saying a lot of different things. Let me see here real quick. What are you seeing on Wikipedia? That the the plot is <laughs> Brent Horizon took the plot from it. Oh, I didn't see some letters. I'm going to have to watch them back to back now. And that's a day well spent to me. You yeah, that'd be my uh... better hobby. No. There is no such thing as a better hobby than hanging out and watching really like vintage, like somewhat acceptable horror and sci-fi movies. <sighs> and yet I get I get flack for watching perfectly awful movies that are made in present day. Yeah, you can watch Neil Brain movies all you want. <laughs> and oh I no, do. Matt, he wanted to, he wanted to show me the trailer to the new Neil Brain movie a few weeks ago. And so we played it on the show. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I expect the trailer to be like maybe like you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. This is like a five minute trailer. And yep. And okay. I watched I did watch the movie um under duress. I watched the movie. And there is a scene at the end of the movie where a bunch of politicians and powerful people get caught up That's and everything. Movie. Oh, was it no, no, that was okay. No, then that was Faithful so, Findings. Faithful Findings is the one I watched, not the not the, not the new one. But Faithful Funnies was not much better. Oh my God, it's Neil Brain. Like, <laughs> you know, you've seen one Neil Brain movie, you've seen them all. Um, <laughs> except the new ones have two Neil Brains in them. The <laughs> double the brain, double the brain. <laughs> my God, he plays himself. Well, not himself, oh. but he plays the man with two brains. <laughs> No, exactly. This, uh, no, Matt. This Faithful Findings movie that uh, Josh told me that I should watch. I watch it, and I don't know why it was so hysterical to me. At the end, he uh, he does what he has to do. <laughs> hey, spoilers! And, uh, then throw a spoiler thing up in here. That way, people that are are diehard interesting seeing Faithful Findings by Neil Breen aren't so disheartened by by my spoilers. spoilers. But uh, there's. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in case you want to watch Neil Breen movies and you actually want to watch them, I'm spoiling the hell out of an old movie called Faithful Findings. It's not good. It won't make uh, sense anyway. Yeah, they, they none of them do. None of them do. Like, I understand. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. Matt, I understand what you're saying about the movie earlier. Like, this movie is, I don't know how to describe it. But either way, all these politicians and powerful uh, executives are getting called out. They're, you know, pretty much getting wrapped up in, like, all their own scandals. And they're being, like, aired out the drive for the public to see. And they're all sitting in front of the same damn building in the background. It's all green screen. Uh -huh. It's the same exact damn building. Neil loves his green screen. And each and every one of them are shooting themselves in their heads. Well, and I guess it's on different days. And no, it's all no at the same one... time. Huh? It's, it's, it's like one afternoon. It's it's a press conference. That was one afternoon? <laughs> they don't say otherwise. Okay. Well, okay. Then, you know, that would make sense. Because it's all during the day. Same, like, you know, same podium, same everything. These people are blowing their brains out. And so with these people blowing their brains out, ladies and gentlemen, not a single person is panicking. Nobody, yep. while after like one after the other, after the other, after the other. And there's even a sniper in one scene that gets shot and killed while a woman is speaking. Yeah, the, the press, press are plotting while this is happening. Yeah, they're, they're just clapping like, oh, yeah, cool, cool. Oh, someone just tried to kill someone. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yay, and, all right. All right and, cool. and Neil Breen's, he's like on the side going, eh? eh yeah, just eh. waving. All I can think about was this had to have been, this had to have taken place in New York City. This is faith, Fateful Findings? Yes. Fateful Findings. Page 222 of the Bad Movie Bible. <laughs> By Rob Hill. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's, two, it's, here's where it says, two children find a stone. Many years later, a middle-aged architect is hit by a car. Accurate. <laughs> the the author also notes when approached when I approached Neil Breen for an interview he wasn't interested which is fair enough given the title of the book I'm surprised anyone was willing somehow <laughs> only one person as far as I know took offense Neil Breen oh no he honestly so, like listen to this you you'll oh, oh yeah go ahead go ahead what's so great is I didn't get a simple refusal I got a well rehearsed explanation as to why his movies are brilliant. He was genuinely convinced that Fateful Findings, in particular, is both a masterpiece and a critical smash. This startled me for a number of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, can we please play the uh, the clip from like, uh, is there any way that we can do this? Play the clip, just like the clip from the uh, press conference scene from Fateful Findings. I can pull it up right now and send it to you on YouTube. Uh I'll I'll work on that. Real it is. Oh my god, that is hysterical. I didn't like. I mean, I was honestly hoping that I was going to be another filmmaker that knew. Hey, you know what? I know I put out garbage, but you know what? <laughs> it makes me money to put out more garbage. I can work for myself, make some shit that I that I think is hysterical. People think it's funny, and then because even like in the new trailer, like uh, of this uh. Whatever the hell it was called, the newest Neil Breen movie that Josh had me watch the five minute trailer for. Everything is green screened. Every single damn thing is green screened. And this guy, like honestly, Tommy Wiseau is like an Oscar award winning actor compared to this dude. This is this is how the he he has a write up on Double Down. I am here now, and Faithful Findings. Um. And pass through. Pass but through. But this is this is this is how it starts. <laughs> One man towers over all who have thrown their hat in the ring to be considered the honor of most delusional twenty first century amateur filmmaker. <laughs> One man so lacking in self awareness that his oh works are more like surreal meditations on narcissism than movies. That man is Neil Breen. <laughs> Holy shit. Damn. That is just like a slap in the face and a punch in the gut and a kick in the balls at the same time. But I'm sure Neil Breen's like, hey, he mentioned my name. 
It's like, I can't <laughs> believe this. Uh, see, at least Tommy Wiseau knows what he is to society as a you know filmmaker. Um, like, he actually got an interview with Clara Landret, who was the co-star in Fateful Findings. Okay. And the, I mean, it's just it's fascinating because um, just just the first question alone. Firstly, can you confirm Neil is an architect by trade? There's some doubt online. As far as I'm aware, yes, Neil is an architect and apparently a pretty good one too. He's also an avid race car driver. This is it's too. <laughs> Wait, she's. She followed up the architect with uh, with the whole race car driver thing. She's like, yeah. Not only is he really good architect, he's he's an avid race car driver. So I wonder, I wonder if he just pays people to say shit like that. Like, hey, if they ever ask you, like, hey, just you know, like, also build me up as a, as a race car driver. <clears throat> and, you know what? And if he was a, if he was such a great architect, you think he'd actually be able to build a good story, folks? All right, Josh, what are you finding here, buddy? You, you're. You're dealing around there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, Matt. I want to be honest with all of you. I've been hacking into government and corporate systems all over the country. All over. All over the world. Yeah. I have discovered more information than any hacker ever has. Ever. What I have found will shock you. Here are the files <laughs> and supporting documents. Why the hell aren't they clapping? Supporting truths. <laughs> the You'll see. Documents. You'll see. I'm releasing these files to the public today. Money, payoffs, and greed were always the priority of my company, like many companies. I'm afraid of going to prison. They now know my crimes. I am resigning today. <laughs> the people who elected me deserve someone who cares about them oh, God. and the country. <laughs> Many of my other fellow incompetent senators must resign now also. My releasing these files today you, there's will not endanger any innocent persons, <laughs> but they will identify governments and corporations from the Supreme that Court have committed fraudulent. I think so. Activities against mankind. That doesn't, that doesn't seem right. They all are sitting from the Supreme Court and eliminated immediately. I resign today as president of the bank. For their lying, their greed, their injustice. He's an important guy. He's a pre he's president of the All bank. The pressure to operate in a deceiving way and cheat the customer. Goodbye. <laughs> Today, it's the balloon pop. My resignation. Who was the politician in Pennsylvania that actually I, did that? And other oh, God. insurance companies are about oh, to God. Yeah, like, um, uh, guided. like Bud Dwyer or something. That's it. Yes, that's it. Yeah. The people <coughs> deserve much better. Like he's like, if this if this will upset you, leave the room right now. It's like who the what? Lying, 
cheating of our customers. There's nothing Fraud. in his hand. Like, why would the bubble still be closed? Just. It's very pleased with this bubble, too. <laughs> Just slowly <laughs> putting his nose on the. Me. He could have put Tic Tacs in there or something. Any of my fellow Wall Street brokers. I've been lying, cheating, and scamming investors out of their money. We cannot continue to let them slip through our failed justice systems. I'm leaving now, rather than going to prison for the rest of my life. I sat here for two hours of this movie to appease Josh. It was worth every second, wasn't it? No. These files will prove to all of you, all of you, the political and corporate dishonesty that exists. And by the way, finding out he's a hacker doesn't happen to like, I don't know. There are systems that are there to undermine society's best interests for the purpose of greed. Was this in, movie, in the theaters? Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. You will be shocked and amazed at what I have here. <laughs> it will scare you. It's so stupid. But you should be scared because it is the truth. You now have all the truths, the real truth. Act now on your own outside of the corporate systems and these incompetent politicians. Act now. Oh God, this is okay. It's our only hope for the future. Okay, yeah, Josh, I think, okay, all right, oh, my God. So was that actually in theaters, Josh? Like, he's got, like, you know, lots of money. You're on mute, buddy. You keep putting yourself on mute. There we go. It not, not in the traditional, well, somebody put money behind this, and it got a release kind of way, but no, there, there are art house theaters, you know. Like, uh, one of my local theaters is doing a whole – like two hours of internet cat videos. Um, that That's going to be one of the things that they show this month. Why? Because why not? Are they... So, oh, my God. I would, I would, I'd, I'd go to that. <laughs> I would go. I'm, I'm going to that. That's, it's going to be great. Gonna... <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's not so much no, it's you're, cat you're videos as much as, you know, how are they going to curate what they show? What's yeah, going to like, be the through line? It's like, is my favorite going to make the cut? Exactly. <laughs> is it going to be silent film and then the keyboard cat is in the theater playing like the accompanying music? Yeah, the cat's going to be playing chopsticks on chopsticks. <laughs> so, like, man, like, you know, there's sometimes like there, like, some places will actually, like, you know, come, like, you know, try to really hype up a release. And uh, have the entire area like decorated in the theme of the movie. Uh, it happened with like The mm -hmm. Simpsons, at least like in Tinseltown and Jacksonville, they decorate everything to be very Simpson esque, even the bathrooms. Uh, it'd be hysterical to do with, uh, with like, you know, the cat movie. Like, you know, you go in there, you got to take a shit, you got a litter box or, you know, shit in. You know, here's our cat movie. What is this at Sunray Cinema? Yeah. Hey, man, they're actually doing that in a lot of grade schools, man. These liberals, man. <laughs> I have actually heard people say that shit. Like, oh, they put cat boxes in these schools. Like, well, you stop. Like, I know a guy, like, man, who was there, man. I know, I know a friend of a friend of a friend of a cousin of a neighbor. I'm like guy. three of those guys. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> God. Oh my lord! So I mean, Matt, like with these, uh, you know, you you see like the the brilliance I'm talking about with Neil Breen with, you know, his 
just the fine storytelling that he puts out, like you know, not so remotely that, hard that, to follow. That, that's, that's barely even covers what happens. And I mean, none of that matters for the first ninety minutes. Okay, because you don't even know he's a hacker until like right before his first. Oh, like an hour. Goes, Oops. Yeah. This <laughs> movie makes no sense. <laughs> the wife becomes an addict out of nowhere. It's like. I think we found somebody prettier to be the love interest. So let's just make her an addict and kill her off. Oh my God, Matt, what was what was the name of that book that you uh, were reading out of? What, what was that one again? It's like the this hundred worst films. The Bad Movie Bible by bad Rob movie Bible. Hill. <laughs> I call that a watch list. <laughs> there is there, you know. I, I I haven't gotten around to it, but I was gonna just start checking off the ones that I own. You know, probably... Ninja Three, the the domination check. Is American Ninja in there? I think American Ninja's in here. May, maybe. Oh, Bird God. Demic. Um, Bird Death Demic. Three. Death yeah, Bird Demic's in here. Aren't they making a sequel to Bird Demic? Yeah, the sequel already came out years ago. Or I don't know. <laughs> Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. <laughs> Battlefield so. Earth, man. I have that on my shelf of bad movies. That is just a tremendous. I, I have that. I have that in my DVD collection. Holy shit. I got me I haven't seen it. Oh, no. It's, it's, uh, yeah. It's, um, if you want to see what, you know, Aaron Hubbard, like had in his imagination, Josh, it's worth watching this. Uh, Travolta made it swearing it was going to be bigger than Star Wars. And, and it it's, wasn't. And it's, and it's, ba it's, it's a part one. It's only the first half of the book. I was going to say, weren't and, there like, you know, weren't there a few books? Yeah. And uh, he was convinced like, well, it's going to be such a big hit that, you know, we'll be able to make the second one. It was not no it it was it was not um they didn't they didn't want any more he he wanted no. to make a sequel hollywood said no thank you and there you go yeah that was that was uh two plus hours of uh john travolta just really coming off more like nicholas cage it's like he was it's a whole movie it was him in alien gear like you know just imitating nicholas cage I think you're thinking about Face Off. No, I'm talking about like I'm talking about Battlefield Earth. It's like he worked with Nicholas Cage in Face Off. And it's like, oh well, yeah, I remember this really bad, bad shit crazy guy I worked with a few years back. Time for me to emulate Nicholas Cage. And then Battlefield Earth came out, and it's just like, oh, okay, well, yeah. And he's got like an over top, over the top, like I guess, uh, alien accent or the like uh, his, his enunciation of all the words that he does. Like he says, like. Um... When I was learning how to, when you were learning how to spell your name, I was being groomed to conquer galaxies. Their whole downfall is that the, um, I think, what are they called? Uh, Zexies? That, that's the name of the aliens. They want gold for some reason. It's never explained why they want gold. And then they come to Earth and uh, it's like post apocalypse. So, like, we're. Like people are just kind of, you know, dumb and almost savage, very primal, but they can still speak English. And then um, they call us man animals. And really, their whole downfall is that when they are on Earth, the ceilings are way too low and they keep banging their heads, and everything is translated um, from their language into English. So, like, the worst expletive they say is translates into english as crap damn lousy so <laughs> they're constantly like banging their heads and he goes ah crap damn lousy ceilings get some man animals in here to fix this so that that's their undoing is they get man animals to come like raise the ceilings and then somehow uh barry pepper like breaks off from the group and like finds a machine like in the matrix where he just sits and like learns math and then is teaching the other man animals how to do math. 
and they're like, why are you teaching us this? You, you were supposed to, 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 to teach us how we're going to beat them. And he's like, this is exactly how we're going to beat them. And then it never comes into play. <laughs> um, yeah, the best scene is uh, when like they, they have they, they capture Barry Pepper and they're, they're like monitoring him and they're like uh, they're going to bribe him with his favorite food. And somebody, somebody questions John Travolta, like, well, how, how are you going to know what his favorite food is? It's like, well, we're going to set him free. And whatever, whatever food he eats first is obviously his favorite. So he's just running <laughs> through the forest and he grabs whatever he can and he finds like a rat. And so he just grabs it and like he kills it and he starts eating it. So then when they recapture him, <laughs> Travolta comes in. He's like tied to like an interrogation chair. Right? Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. And then like Travolta comes in with a dead rat. And he's like, what's the matter, rat brain? Don't you want lunch? <laughs> Just like squishing the rat against his head. The movie's unbelievable. Forrest Whitaker's in it, too. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you got, no, you got some prolific actors in that movie. And it's so bad. Uh, yeah. like, it's, it's like they really, read the really script. Like, and they had to read the script. And be like, I'm excited to be part of this movie. I, I mean, it's got to be like, you know, you hear about like, you know, uh, uh, Alec Guinness reading the script for Star Wars. And it's just like, oh, yeah. All right. They've got magic powers. And there's a giant dog who walks around with this other guy. And it's like, all right, just pay me on the back end. <laughs> Smartest deal he ever made, too. Holy um, shit. But well, what was it like? I think uh, I was reading somewhere about like uh, Alec Guinness, like with people that would come up and talk to him. Uh, something about how if they were to mention Star Wars, he would just like shoot them away or something like that, or just something Kick like uh, if like he would get like uh, he would get like upset if like they would. I think something like he would just say, "Just don't mention Star Wars," or whatever. But I mean, that, that movie, I mean, the, the deal he yeah. made in that movie, his payment, yeah. that dude got insanely wealthy. You mentioned Star Wars to him. He took a crisp one hundred dollar bill out of his like a, a hundred like a hundred pound note out of his billfold and crumbled it up and threw it in the other direction. And when you go when you chased after it, you turned around. He was gone. Now That's he's like, in like, one he was... of my favorite all time movies, The Bridge on the River Kwai. Um, he's in a really far out movie called um, what's it called, The Prisoner. Um, you ever see that? I think is that the uh, is that the POW movie? No, he played. It's like it's it's like a dystopian type deal where he's like a priest. He's like a um. He's like uh, he might even be like a bishop or like a cardinal, and then he gets arrested um, by like the you know the 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 powers that be, the Big Brother. And it's and it, and, it, and it, it's almost like a play, but like it's it's completely tripped out and fucking gnarly. Um, and then the guy who interrogates him, who's like his job, it is to is to break him, is like an old friend of his from like you know childhood. And it's just this. It's it's fucking far out. I'll say that. Um, I don't think I've ever seen. I don't even think I've ever heard that one. I'll check it out. Yeah. I think it's I have it up there. I can't I think it's called The Prisoner. Not not the BBC show with uh, Magoo and um also of the same name. Also pretty far tripped out. You writing that down, Brandon? You can't remember. Write that shit down, homie. Because I look at my notepad more than I look at anything else. I don't look at my phone that much. Fair enough. He doesn't listen to the show back. No, he never. I do once in a while. <laughs> I mean, you know, before we wrap up, if I'm going to recommend some other obscure, terrible movies, I would say Champagne and Bullets yep. should be at the top of anybody's list. Vinegar Syndrome put out a Blu-ray of that that has three different cuts of the movie with different titles. Um, always, always a good sign. Either if 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 a dude, and it's always a dude. Writes, directs, produces, and stars in the film. It's either going to be Citizen Kane or Champagne and Bullets. So that's 
And the, well, I mean, if the guy has like three different cuts and three yeah. different titles, that man made three different movies in one shot. And 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 they are like different. Like you're like, wow, he really did. And William Smith shows up in that movie. He's you know the the you know driving king. He was in you know um, he was the heel in Hell Comes to Frogtown. He was in Swinging Barmaids. He's in so, what what's the movie he's in where he's like his dad is a vampire that like raped his mom, and so then he's it's almost like, it's it's like Blade. So he's like half vampire, and he goes like looking for Dracula to kill him. It's it's far. Right? He was in a bunch of biker movies in the seventies and shit. Wow. Um, okay. And then the other one I would recommend is The Fanglies, which is um, just like almost infuriating how bad it is. Uh, perfect, perfect to watch with a with a loved one or an enemy. <laughs> Is it this Halloween, it? meet Texas's new cannibal family. <laughs> oh, you know who's in this? Is uh, what's his name? Um, God, the text is so small, but you'd recognize him. He was he was in um, he was in Blazing Saddles. Tell them that I said ow. Got it. That guy. A song. A real song. Oh God, that's how that about guy. the camp town ladies? Yeah, played a cowboy and everything. Yeah, <laughs> the camp town ladies. Also, I would recommend. I mean, this is champagne and bullets here. That's oh my God, William that, Smith, right that, there. That looks as exciting as you're saying it is. I mean, this poster makes it look a thousand times better than it actually is. You know. <laughs> Shot on video. That guy holding the gun. He's the the star and director and writer and all that stuff. You know, my favorite posters for movies are ones that like you know have things that just do not happen inside the movie at all. Yeah, they're like old Atari games where you're like, "Wow, this looks amazing," and then you get it home, you're like, "These are just bricks." Well, it's like going uh, back to like, oh god, Nightmare Man. I would also recommend. This is uh, that was back when they had one? the uh, yes, that's that's the one back when they uh, if I if I if I remember right, that's back when they had the. Um, AMC Midnight stuff, right? Was it like there was like oh, a, or, I, or IFC? What's that? I forget what it was, but um, there was a scene. I think it was Nightmare Man, where someone just shoots at the camera, shoots at the Nightmare Man, and just runs off. But it's like a person, like, and I remember uh -huh. seeing this. I, I saw this in like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, yeah, and I could not stop mistake. laughing at this movie. Um, there's there's a movie amazing. I should. There's a movie I can recommend to you. I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, it was uh, made in the same releases as uh, Nightmare Man. It was called uh, the Deaths of Ian Stone or the Many Deaths of Ian Stone. I forget, I forget what it was called, but it's a guy that dies over and over and over and over in really messed up ways. Okay. And um, it's supposed to be a horror, but it's just it's so stupid and funny. Like turns out, like he keeps dying because. Uh, demons are. I think it's like demons are feeding off of his uh, deaths. I'm like, why not just kill him and feed off his soul? Just kill him. Like, then. Just yeah, like they just keep killing him over and over and over and over and over. It's like kind of like one of those. I don't know, but no, Nightmare Man. I could not stop laughing when I saw it because I think it's it's a great comedy. It is hysterical unintentionally. Yeah, it's um, good God. Uh, it, w the worst part of it is um, that Blu-ray has like behind-the-scenes stuff, so it has interviews with the the filmmakers. Yeah, and it's like it's really rough being like face to face with the person who made the movie, and you're like, oh, God, no, I'm gonna bump this from half a star to one star just on Letterbox because I feel so guilty because you're like, it's not it's it's not like a Neil Breen or like Travolta sitting there where you're like, look at this blowhard. Like it's like this, you know. Like, oh man, we really went out there. And we really made this. We had this idea for the movie. And it's like, oh, please stop talking. Please stop being earnest. <laughs> Shit. So like that's another thing. Like like I said, like one is the movie posters that have things. Like, okay, like it's like um, well, like I mentioned earlier, like you know, with uh, Transformers when Mega Man showed up to save the day at the end of the movie. Um, it's the same thing. Like when and like I was, I said, like 
while we're talking about the posters uh, earlier, uh, the Mega Man poster is like a guy with a gun, like a pistol kind of deal, like, which is not really anything remotely yeah. Mega Man. Uh, there was a movie I was watching a while back. Is like the poster was like, oh, it looks like a good movie. And I think there was a scene in the poster where it's like a person is like flying or something like that, like or like just like falling really fast, like with a gun out of the hand, like never happens in the movie. Like there's nothing about that. Uh, there's a guy that is falling, but a lot of people fall in the movie. I forget the name of it. But um, it just it cracks me up. Then when you have like the uh, actors talk about these movies as if they're such a deep, you know, subject matter to really discuss. Yeah. And it's just two hours of mind-numbing bullshit. It's almost like watching uh, most of uh, Uwe Boll's movies. Like if you hear him talk about his movies like, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it, like In the Name of the King or, you know, House of the Dead or alone in the dark if you ever hear this man talk about his movies you think that he wrote something really dark and very meaningful and they're just really bad movies like my favorite my favorite thing is you know when you see people doing the you know the press junkets and things like that and they're really hyping up their stuff and everything's fine everything's hunky-dory even though the movie itself is not good um at all it's 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 the it's the interviews that come Months later, that were like, you see, you see the look on their face, like, yeah, <laughs> it's like they're worn down by life at this point. <laughs> we thought we were doing something, uh, something pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, it didn't wind up ending up on the screen what we thought we were doing, but you know, uh, you know, we still had fun doing it. <laughs> Unless it's the I Super mean, Mario movie. Hey, you leave that movie alone. That movie is amazing. I'm, I'm just, you know, just dropping that thing there, and I'm just gonna. You know, it. I'll, you know, the hell with it. I'll even say like the uh, the OG Mario Brothers movie with Bob Hoskins was not that bad if it was not related to Super Mario. It wasn't horrible. Um, I I mean, there's like a there's like an oral history of that movie where Leguizamo was <clears> like, <throat> we were drunk. Like blind oh, yeah. drunk in every scene we shot of that. Like Bob yep. Hoskins was like, "Oh, they don't Didn't know how to make scripts. a fucking movie. We're we're just gonna drink this whole time." Oh yeah, well yeah, like what was it? Uh, Dennis Hopper said that he just stopped reading the script because it would change so damn much. But uh, yeah, th th yeah, there's a whole documentary about that movie, and it is just. I think the couple, like the the yeah, the man and woman that directed that movie. To my understanding, like um, I was reading somewhere where they said that they would go in uh, to throw their names into the candidacy to direct another movie, and people would have them come in to meet with them, just be like, "You guys are the ones that directed the Mario Brothers movie. We're not going to hire you. We just want to meet you." <laughs> that's wild. Like when you become more infamous than famous, that's usually not a good sign. But um, we, uh, I hate this. We do have to wrap this up. I do have to go. Tonight, Josh. Well, I was going to say, um, you, you want to know what is wild? What is uh, a good sign? That's uh, the fact that everybody that joined us here tonight, thank you. Thank you for all uh, <laughs> watching, listening. And if you're yes. downloading this at a later date, like you normally do, um, I'll thank you in advance. So, with yeah. that being said, let's uh, let's make the rounds. Matt is the guest of honor. You can, you can go first. Plug away. What, what do you have coming up? How can people reach you on the social medias and uh, tell you, you know, awesome job. Uh, yes, I will take any and all praise um, via social media at McCarthy Redhead. Uh, TikTok is the place to find me, McCarthy Redhead. Um, if, if you enjoy my Blu-ray reviews or I grab VHS tapes and see what's on them, and uh, we watch wrestling podcasts every Wednesday, wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, weekend of September 8th, going to be in St. Louis with Pete Holmes. Uh, September 15th, we'll be in Raleigh and September, October 6th, be in Salt Lake City. So get a load of that. And then uh, the We Watch Wrestling podcast. I think we're going to be in 
uh, Seattle the weekend of the 29th for that big AEW New Japan show. And uh, we're going to be trying to put together a, if it's not a a live podcast, at least it's a hang. But uh, hit us up and check all that good stuff out. And yeah, check out all my stand-up comedy wherever you listen to digital music. Have you uh, you been to the Jacksonville Wrestling Con? No. It's when do they do that? Pretty big. Uh, okay. Let's see. I don't even remember because after the pandemic and things like that, it, 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 <clears throat> they get it when they can, I guess. Yeah, no, Jacksonville has like a very, very large like underground wrestling. Uh, you it's know, that large scene, underground like... wrestling company called AEW. Yeah, those guys like. Yeah, they 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 have like no no. I'm just going to say like they have a lot of uh, like the matches like in Jackson Beach they would have like you know the AEW matches, but there'd be like a small like turnout. It's like a small little uh, thing they do to promote it. So it seems like okay. the next one is uh, I guess, well next year. Um, June eighth and 9th at the I guess they moved it to the World Golf Village. That's well, what I think of when I think of wrestling, golf. <laughs> well, instead of getting chairs, you can get like golf clubs and everything else. I mean, you know, take right. somebody out with like a golf cart. They took out the the golf hall of fame, so it, it's good that the you know thing is being used for something. So yeah, Jacksonville, um, well, south of Jacksonville near St. Augustine, uh, June eighth and 9th. Um, with uh, so far announced guests oh no it's past guests they don't have announced guests yet but in the past they've had the hardys fred hart uh brian danielson uh glenn jacobs kurt angle rvd you know the usual suspects seemed like a good yeah. spot um to, uh, for you guys to pop in okay I want no, that, that, that's that sounds interesting. That actually sounds interesting. I'm actually slowly getting into the whole AEW thing, so I've got a few people that have uh really kind of you know had me sit down to watch a few of the matches, and it looks it, it really is interesting. It's looks like a good time. I wouldn't mind going to actually see one live. So, well, you're uh, you're you're out there on the west coast, I'm sure you can you know make your way somewhere that they're they're going to show up. Well, I'm about to have an, uh, an abundance of free time, so I'll have some time to really look into that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, it's this where I plug myself in here. Uh, so yeah, plug yourself, okay. Brandon. <laughs> oh, I will. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you want to uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, B Jacksman One N A Two, Facebook. I really come on, guys. Like I, I, I'm getting like I really do get a lot of friend requests on Facebook. I don't really do that much, but you can follow the podcast on Facebook, just facebook.com backslash the podcast in with Instagram, just type in the podcast. You'll come across our page. Got a picture of me and Josh in the uh, profile picture. Give us a like, give us a follow. Uh, and on um, Twitter, I do not do it very often, uh, but X just now. type in, oh, X, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, just, you know, just type in the Brandon Junk and you'll see a picture of me and all my black and white glory uh, in the picture, rocking one of the podcast t-shirts. So uh, that's where you can follow me. And yeah, hope hopefully that's you know, I don't think I'm missing anything there. Oh, TikTok, Brandon Junk, I but you know, come on, home. do TikTok that often. Josh, what about you, buddy? Well, as always, you can go to wadcomedia.com to find all the pertinent information and the links to go to the Wadco Media stuff, whether it's Facebook X, I guess. I gotta change that website. Uh, Facebook X, YouTube. You know, Spotify, all the links are there at wadcomedia.com. You can find them. You can find the links to my social media as well. Uh, So feel free to contact. And if you're listening to this on a delayed basis, uh, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, where you get wherever you get your your favorite podcast. And uh, just as a uh, personal recommendation, yes, we watch wrestling. That's a great podcast. You should definitely check that out. so, wadcomedia.com. That's really all you need to know. That has it all. Wadcomedia.com. We are here each and every Friday night for the broadcast, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And uh, just 
as an update for all of you uh, 10 to 1 listeners, um, I think, yeah, Brandon, you mentioned earlier, Matt, um, we do a show with um, my good friend Jen. She lives in Maui and has had a, a bit of a hard time considering her island was on fire. And what it, what it is is that we pick a topic and make a, a list of 10 movies about that topic. And that's uh, hopefully coming back soon as the emergency in Maui uh, goes from dire to, you know, just, you know, imminent. Yep. That's a, that's, it's, it's one of my favorite nights of the week. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be see, seeing that soon. Uh, is it time? Is it time for the message? Yep. No music, right? That like really bad no music. music. Okay, no good. Yes, yes, it's, yes. It's time. It's time. All right, Matt. Since the last time you were here, uh, you know, you know, last time I had this message of hope, of of prosperity, of creation. Do out, go out there and create your art. But that's since changed a little bit. Uh, and instead, I do this. I have this little graphic. I throw up. <laughs> throw up. <laughs> Writers and actors are on strike. These are some uh, websites that can lead you to uh, resources to help, whether it's financially, whether it's with your time, you know, however you feel uh, like you can kind of pitch in and show some support for those that are on strike. And uh, really, really, I think it, it's, it's very much needed. These are the people that bring us the art that we love. So it is only fitting that we show our support we stand in solidarity as much as we can by doing whatever we can even if it's uh throwing a few dollars to entertainmentcommunity.org or going down to the picket lines or you know putting in x at there i don't know what they're called posting about uh you know your support just none of the things that we talk about are possible without the people, the fine, fine people in these unions. And let's do what we can to help this strike uh, come to an end in, in, in a way that is uh, not just amicable, but uh, very beneficial to the people that are responsible for the billions of dollars that these uh, companies are pulling in. So uh, take a good look at the screen, WGAContract2023.org, uh, SAGAfterStrike.org, and EntertainmentCommunity.org. These are your resources. Uh, visit them, and they'll be able to give you any and all information that you need uh, to help. All right, that's been the show. Thank you so much, Matt McCarthy, for yeah. coming on the show tonight. Yeah, Matt, Thank you for having me, here, Yeah, It's always great to have you back. Uh, you guys have a fantastic Friday night and uh, an awesome weekend. And Matt, I hope the kids, uh, you know, bowel crisis comes to an end as soon as possible for you guys. Well, apparently he just had a big bowl of chili with 36% of your daily five. Oh, God. <laughs> Get into it. It sounds like that strike is ending. <laughs> well, you're going to have a, you know, either a really interesting night or a really interesting morning. So, you know. Um, but either way, I'm happy uh, the wife and the kid are both feeling much better. I'm happy you didn't really come down with anything. And um, as always, you're always welcome back here whenever you want, buddy. Okay. Thank you, buds. All right. Good night, guys. Have a great night, everybody.